Good morning, this is Matt Reisinger with Reisinger Homes. Welcome to my video blog on green building and building science. My company is doing a whole house remodel on this house behind me. This is a 1950s house in South Austin. We're in the Barton Hills neighborhood. And uh, we're taking this house from a 1950s standard of efficiency all the way up to 2010. And one of the ways that we're doing that is with a new spray foamed attic and new HVAC equipment. I don't know if you've ever seen uh, foam being sprayed. My crew's at lunch right now. Uh, so I thought I'd show you what their rig looks like while everything's quiet. Come on in here. This trailer that you see here houses all their equipment to be able to spray foam. And uh, this foam that we're spraying is a certainty brand today. It's what they call an open cell foam. It's a half pound density. And uh, you can see that they, they requires a lot of equipment. One of the reasons why it's so expensive to install this product is, is frankly just because there's a lot of uh, equipment in these trailers that these guys have to maintain and the product itself is not inexpensive. It does fluctuate based on petroleum prices. But uh, you can see there's a part A and a part B that mixes together in this blue hose that's coming into the house. There's a really high pressure uh, pump back there and also a pretty good sized compressor. And they also need a generator for, uh, for this process too because it requires a lot of uh, electricity to, uh, to run these. So it's not, a, uh, it's not an inexpensive process to get set up with, and that's one of the reasons why spray foam is more expensive than a traditional fiberglass insulation, but we believe that it's so worth it. So let's go in and take a look at this house. As I mentioned, this was a 1950s house. It was insulated pretty traditionally. Um, luckily, it was insulated in the walls. It had fiberglass insulation in the walls, and the ceiling was insulated in a very traditional manner in the flat. We're coming into uh, an area that we've remodeled. So this has been opened up and we've vaulted the ceiling. Those are new two by 10 rafters we scabbed on there. So this did not have a vault before. Um, but now we're taking that insulation from the flat portion of the house and bringing that insulation all the way up to the rooftop. And what that does is it makes this house insulation fully encapsulate the house so that now our new HVAC equipment up in the attic, we're, we're uh, going with a 16 sear heat pump, which is a 13 EER, very, very efficient equipment. And it's going to be running in what we call a conditioned attic space. So this attic will be no more than maybe five or six degrees hotter than the rest of the house, even on the hottest summer day. So if their thermostat is set at 75, their attic should be no hotter than about low 80s, 82 maybe. Whereas most attics in Texas here in Austin where it gets to be you know upper 90s on a, tr on a typical July day those attics may be 130 140 degrees and if you've got ductwork up in that attic your ductwork you know maybe is 60 degrees inside has a real thin layer of insulation is running through a you know a net temperature differential of maybe 60 or 70 degrees huge amount of loss there you really need a huge engine to cool down that house because there's a lot of loss up in that attic in this case, these ducts here in this attic, in fact, you can see this main trunk line there. That's a metal trunk line that my HVAC contractor has dropped and flex ducts into the rooms. And uh, so that attic is going to be, you know, within a couple degrees of the temperature on the inside of the house. Um, and that's going to make a huge difference in efficiency. So now that air in there that's maybe 60 degree air running into the house is only going to have a net temperature differential of maybe 15 degrees. So we're able to downsize the size engine we need to heat and cool this house. So even with some newer, larger windows installed and uh, a slightly bigger footprint, we're, we're within the original roof line of the house, but we did push this family room back into, to capture a little bit of porch area. It's going to make for a very, very efficient house. So thanks for joining me. If you're thinking about uh, building or remodeling, I highly recommend you check out Spray Foam. Uh, whether it's open cell or closed cell, it's a great product. It totally fills the cavities. And here in this hot, humid climate, it makes a big difference in your air conditioning bills. Have a good day, everybody. Talk to you soon. Hey, these guys just uh, break for lunch, and we're back here on the job site. We're spray foaming the roof here. As you can see, that part A and the part B mixes. There's two hoses there. And uh, those two mix together, it sprays on, it looks kind of like paint when it's being sprayed on it, and then it blows up and it fills up that whole cavity. Here in Austin, we use at least five and a half inches in total thickness. And uh, in fact, he's probably spraying closer to uh, six or seven inches, so we're really getting our money's worth out of here. Isn't that amazing, though? He sprays that on, totally fills that whole cavity. In fact, we're getting a little bit of a double whammy on this house because the, uh, the old roof originally probably had... Uh, 
feeder on it, and you can see we've got some one by four last. And so when he spray foams that, one of the big benefits is that spray foam is running underneath between the plywood and the rafters. And so we're getting a little better of a thermal break. It's, it's actually great. If you look up there, you can see that right where he just sprayed. It's getting all the way underneath that plywood. So we're getting another probably three quarter of an inch of foam. Um, and we're, we're, uh, we're making a good thermal break there. So that really the only places that is a direct heat transfer is where we've got that one by four strapping up against our two by six rafters here in the south. It's going to make a huge difference in energy efficiency and uh, not particularly costly. This house is about 2,000 square feet and you'd be surprised how inexpensive it is to foam it. You can see we've left the drywall on a few of the walls where we haven't been touching it, but the entire roof is getting spray foam and all the open to stud bays are getting spray foam. You guys do a great job and uh, if you're interested in this, I highly recommend you do this in your house. Have a good day everybody. We'll see you next time.